lot of y'all been waiting for this video, so we're gonna get into it. How to start your own box truck business. So, first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a picture of a list of everything that you need to get started. And in that list, I'm gonna go through it. Y'all take it, make sure you take a screenshot. Um, take a screenshot, you can crop me out of it just to save the list to have. But number one, first thing you need to do is get your LLC. You can uh, file that with the Secretary of, on the Secretary of State website. See, I don't know for those of y'all who are in different states, I don't know if it's gonna work the same way for me as you know here in Texas with you know the different I know every state has its own laws, regulations, rules, and all that. So um, I know this is what worked for me, but also getting into this, you need to be able to do your own research as well. I'm gonna go through as much as I possibly can to help you as much as possible, but you still gotta do your own research. With anything, you can get free game from anybody about any business, about any place and time, but you still gotta do your own research. Knowledge is power. So that's number one, get your LLC. You can get that from the um, Secretary of State website, which is what I did. Uh, you gotta get your EIN, uh, which is your employer identification number. You can get from the IRS website. I think when I did that, I don't think I went through the IRS website. I think I went through LegalZoom. Uh, one thing you need to know, you don't need LegalZoom. Uh, a lot of different research I did made me think I needed it and I talked to other people who are in the box truck business and they don't use it uh, they help you file stuff when it's supposed to be filed I think I had them for like a year and a half paid a you know probably close to a thousand within the year and a half two years almost maybe uh, and they never filed not one single thing for me so Cancel that. Uh, so you don't need legal zoom. Like I said, just do your research. Number three, open a business bank account. Uh, I would recommend you find a bank that doesn't charge crazy monthly fees for business accounts. I went with uh, PNC, which they're pretty cool. I haven't had any issues. Uh, but like I said, research. Uh, number four, get your DOT medical card. That part you can go to, I know you can go to like Nova, you can go to Concentra. Um, I, I went to Concentra, but I already had a DOT medical card from my previous job that was actually still good. So I didn't go do anything with that until it expired. And then I got a new one. Those are good for two years. Basically DOT medical card is you go in, pee in the cup, they check, uh, it's not a drug test, they check your um, health, basically. It's like a physical, almost. Number five, apply for your authority with the FMCSA. I don't know why it says FMCFA. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the FMCSA. Uh, to get your MC and USDOT number, that's gonna cost you 300. I'm not uh, gonna go through how much everything costs because I really don't remember. It's been two years almost. I know to get your LLC, it wasn't, I think I want to say it was somewhere between like 50 to 150, I think. The EIN number, um, I don't remember if I paid for that. If I did, it was probably like 50 to $100. Uh, open your business bank account. They normally require you to deposit like 100 to $500. Just depends on what bank you choose. <laughs> Um, after that, and like I said, when you go to these uh, different websites and you're doing your research, it's going to take you through the steps. So I'm not going to get too far into depth about each one. It's going to drag the video out. Uh, number six is sign up for your MCS 150, which is a verification of your business. You have to do that once a year. A lot of you're gonna get a lot of phone once you get your MC and DOT number you're gonna get a lot of phone calls from people trying to sell you insurance from people trying to sell you uh, warranties uh, 
dispatchers, you're going to be getting health care, um, medical, like it's everybody is going to be calling you once you get your MC and DOT number because when it hits the FMCSA website, it shows all your information and anybody can access that. That's how the insurance and all those people end up getting in touch with certain, certain drivers, certain people. It's annoying. I've been in almost two years and I still get probably anywhere from five to ten phone calls a day from numbers I don't know. And I block them every time. My block list is probably like 200, 200 numbers. But uh, yeah, the MCS 150 is a verification for your business. So you have to do that once a year. Um, that one, I believe you can go through. Man, who did I go through? Uh, was it UCR? MCS 150. Yeah, because you got to do an MCS 150 and you got to do your UCR, which is a Unified Carrier Registration. Uh, just research both of those. You should be sent to either the F FMCSA website to do one or the other, or um, you can find websites that are linked in with them. But you'll need the UCR too, especially if you're going to be crossing state lines. Number seven is get insurance on your truck. Insurance is expensive, but it's okay. You'll make the money back, which you will. Be sure your insurance is active at least a week prior to your authority going active because it's a 21 day vetting process for your motor carrier authority. So basically uh, make sure you do your insurance within the 21 days of you hitting the road and getting running that way, it'll be active. For insurance, um, I went through Progressive which once I'm done with this, I'm gonna go through some other things with y'all. Uh, so just bear with me. <sighs> Cause like I said, I'm trying to give y'all as much knowledge as possible. Uh, definitely learned from a lot of mistakes and a lot of trials and tribulations. And I'm trying to basically share that with other people. So when they're starting this, they can start on the you know right foot ahead of them. Instead of me, I just kept, you know, taking other people's advice, taking um, information, just not doing research. And I went, you know, the long way. So I'm giving y'all a shortcut. Um, and with your insurance, basically the one, two, three, yeah, the, oh, damn it, UCR is number nine. I don't know why it says one, two, three, eight, nine but it don't matter so you got to get your commercial general liability not less than a million it needs to be um a million per occurrence and two million the, this insurance setup will have you able to run for amazon relay and mostly any load that hits the low board um and remember this is for box trucks 26 foot box trucks that's what i run so the knowledge i'm giving you is off 26 foot box truck no cdl um and not having a CDL, uh, one of the things you might get confused with, you do not need to enroll yourself into the drug and alcohol program. You don't have to get random drug tests if it's just you and you do not have a CDL. Now, if you have employees and they have CDLs or if you have a CDL, then yes, you have to enroll yourself in the drug and alcohol program and you will have to take random drug tests for filing purposes to have and I'm gonna get into that as well um auto liability not less than a million per occurrence cargo of at least a hundred thousand like I said it's right there take a screenshot whenever you're getting set up just to read that off to them and yeah that's pretty much what every box truck driver gets um let's see some brokers or companies may require more or less that is true uh, these are the requirements for Amazon, which is true. And this is what I went off of. And I run multiple loads per week off of the DAT load board. So it's pretty, it's good for them too. Like some brokers require bonded insurance. Some require um, 1.5 million uh, general liability or, or, you know, like it's, it's crazy, but 
for the most part, this is what you need. This is the base. Okay, then you have to do your BOC3. Right after you do your insurance, your authority cannot go active without your BOC3. And it ha actually has a website right there. Um, BOC3 files your insurance with the FMC, FMCSA, I don't know why they put it, that keeps confusing me. But um, just, I'm telling you, go in this order, you'll be cool. And of course, if y'all have any other questions, make sure you drop in the comments. Make sure if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit that like button, all that. I'll be dropping gems. Uh, what else? Do your unified carrier city. UCR is what, um, it says this list DOT knowing how many trucks you have, but it's it's also something required for you to cross state lines, as far as I know. What I, I don't know. I, I do it. Uh the UCR and the MCS one fifty, I believe both of those you have to do once a year. Or one of them might be every two years. I don't remember. They send me letters in the mail all the time, so make sure as you're doing stuff you keep track of all your um, spending because all of this getting started is tax write-off uh, tax write-off and you want to have everything in order because that was the last one so uh, like I said make sure you take, take the screenshot um, so within the first year you will get a um, new entrant safety audit from the FMCSA, somebody from DOT uh, department, FMCSA, they will uh, email you or f give you a phone call saying, hey, this is such and such with a, uh, you know, you're gonna get a new entrant audit. And they basically want to see all of your information is correct, the amount of trucks. Um, I, got, I got lucky, they didn't do mine in person. They actually, actually did it. Um, through email or through website. I think I had, I had to submit everything through the website. So they basically check and make sure your MC DOT number is active. You have valid insurance up to date. You have your DOT medical card. And this is where it gets tricky because they kept telling me I had to be enrolled in the drug and alcohol program. No, I don't. I don't have a CDL. The only reason you need to be enrolled in that is if you have a CDL or an employee under your business that has a CDL. Like I said, do your research. Make sure you do your research so you know everything you need to know. Um, they're gonna ask that, well, at that time, I, I wasn't really running um, DAT loads. I was mainly doing Amazon Relay, so I was local within the 150 mile range so I did not need a ELD going past 150 miles from your home from the address of your business you have to have an ELD ELD is the electronic log device that uh, basically logs your hours driven hours on duty hours for the week stuff like that and they want to check and make sure you're not violating your HOS so uh, I went on a paper log I ordered it off of Amazon they asked me to uh, um, supply the past, like, I think it was 30 days of my logbook. So I had to take pictures and upload all that. And they checked basic, a lot of the basic stuff, uh, which, I mean, I, I, got, I, I got lucky. I was on point. I passed. Uh, I know if you are not on point, they will put you at a service for a certain amount of time and make you correct whatever you need to correct which you don't want to do that because that's going to you know stop you from making money keep you from making money um and okay so just that's just a heads up so make sure y'all are ready for that new entrant audit what else um i made a couple of other videos prior about uh trucks uh renting you know the the pros and cons of basically everything from buying a truck out the best option you can go with is buy a truck cash make sure you have a you know valid mechanic or shop look through over it make sure you're not going to have any issues you don't want to have any issues when you're just starting 
you want to hit the ground running so you can you know make some money because you're going to spend some money in the beginning whether it be buying a truck financing a truck renting a truck the insurance is crazy high fuel uh, whether you got to stay in a hotel while you're on the road it's just it's up to you i don't know if you're, if you're gonna get a truck with a sleeper you know what i mean they say you're not supposed to sleep in a box truck because it doesn't have a sleeper you're not i guess really supposed to lay down on the whatever blah 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 um i stay in hotels sometimes tax write-off a lot of this stuff is tax write-off fuel food while you're working you're on the clock you're delivering a load anything is tax write-off because you have to think um when you're getting paid from amazon relay or dat factoring company they're not taking taxes out so um let me see but yeah buying a truck cash would be the best option uh i would suggest like a 2014 or older just because insurance will be cheaper the newer the truck the higher the, ex the insurance is going to cost when i first started i was renting a truck from enterprise i was paying anywhere from 2300 to 3000 a month for the truck rental it was like 1950 a month plus like it was like 18 cents per mile so the more you drive the more you pay basically the insurance i had to put down like four thousand or six thousand something crazy which was the deposit for the insurance and then it was like twenty five hundred dollars a month so just from the truck renting a truck from enterprise and the insurance was five thousand dollars a month by itself that's why I said buy a truck. If you if you got the cash, cash out, buy the truck, spend money on it to get it, you know, how you need it. Uh, most places will want you to have a lift gate, pallet jack, straps, or, and or load bars. Uh, best truck options, if you have uh, two, two rows of E-Tracks in the trailer of the truck, that way you can strap, you know, one up top if you need to, one in the bottom if you need to, and have a couple of load bars you can put, you know, anywhere else just in case. Make you be able to, you know, have access to more uh, load opportunities if you have all that. Uh, I know a lot of the times I heard to stay away from the box trucks that have the Allison I think it was the Allison motors or I forgot what the motor was but it, it was in a lot of um, internationals I believe not all of uh, not all the internationals but most of them so Hino Freightliner uh, some internationals 6.7 Cummins with the Allison transmission that's the one uh, I got now uh, now I'm financing a truck and I'm paying, I went through Ryder, uh, which was not the best experience. Uh, luckily I did get a warranty on the truck when I got it. That's one good thing. Uh, paying 17, about 1780 a month on that, which is, you know, $1,300 cheaper, anywhere from a thousand to $1,300 cheaper a month. My insurance was actually 1900 on it. It's 2015 Freightliner. Uh, insurance was actually 1900 a month when I first started when I first got it and then once I renewed it went up I'm not sure why I didn't have any tickets or accidents or anything but it went up to um, 2330 hopefully now it's gonna go down I went through progressive but I've been looking around at other insurance places so hopefully I can get it cheaper th th this next renewal but what else can I give y'all like I said, any anytime you have a question, just make sure you drop down in the comments. I'll do my best to respond uh, as fast as I can. I've been hella busy. I've, done, I, I've been told, I promised, a, well not promised, but I told a lot of people I was going to drop this video a lot sooner than I am. I apologize to y'all. It took me so long to get it off. I've been hella tired. I've been ripping and running. Um, I've been doing cra all, of, all types of different loads. I got to actually load in my truck right now. It's Sunday. I got to drop off in Colorado on Tuesday, Seven. it's like 800 miles, it's like 10, 10 and a half to 11 and a half hours, so I'm going to leave out Monday, get my 10 hour reset, and then drop it off Tuesday morning, 
but uh, the best bet when you're first starting I know Amazon Relay is tripping now. They require you to have your authority for six months, which is dumb because uh, it was a good starting point for a lot of people. But there's a lot of people doing Amazon Relay that are messing stuff up for other people. So uh, get you a dispatcher at the beginning. It'll help a lot with them knowing what brokers accept new authorities that way you won't be struggling like i was in the beginning trying to you know do my own carrier packets and sending these brokers all my information it's it's a lot uh, so it helps to have a dispatcher just make sure you get one that's you know only charging you like 10 percent or less per load factoring company i go through otr solutions Shout out to them. They take really good care of me. Uh, basically, with them, they're the factoring company. They, they only take 4% of every load that I run. But normally, if I file an invoice with them, I upload an invoice on the app while I'm on the road. If I do it before 12 in the afternoon, I get paid that same night. I mean, first starting out, you probably they have to verify a lot of stuff, so it might take you know 24 to 48 hours, maybe sometimes even you know three to four days. It just depends. But once you are you know consistent, they see you're running for all these different brokers, then boom, you're gonna start getting paid. Like I said, I, I upload an invoice before 12. I'm paid that same night. Uh, if I upload one after 12, I'm paid the next night. So that's pretty that, that comes in handy with with uh you know having a dispatch so hopefully if you do get a dispatcher you can keep it under 15 percent with the factoring and the dispatcher so then you know they're not taking too much because we got to make money too and brokers are already trying to lowball so make sure you um try to negotiate make sure your dispatcher is negotiating with the brokers for you don't miss out on loads because you're being greedy but you know get your money and what else? I think that's really about it. I mean, it's, it's a lot into this that I've learned over, you know, the two years that, I've, that I'm about, I'm about to hit my second year in May. And we're about to enter April, so I'm right there. So I've had my authority for, you know, two years, uh, just me, owner operator. I'm not really looking into branching out right now and getting, you know, employees or, you know, other trucks or lending out my MC or DOT uh, info for other people to use. I'm not trying to do that right now. So, I mean, don't even ask. Because I don't, me personally, I don't know enough information about doing that. And I don't want to put my reputation on somebody that I don't know. Um, which, I mean, no offense, but come on. You're starting a business. I, I, I jumped off the porch to start my business. Uh, it took a huge leap of faith. And I've been, I've been, you know, doing bad for a while. Like, it was a whole bunch of times I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up, but... I'm just not built like that. So, I mean, I've been thugging it out and, you know, it'll pay off. You just gotta, it's not for the week. So, I mean, if, if you're gonna get into it and you can't handle the pressure, don't even do it. If you're not good at handling pressure, don't even do it. Cause <laughs> it's gonna stress you out. You see these white hairs? I'm only 35 years old, man, come on. It's stressful. I ain't have all these before I started my business. But it is what it is, you know? You live, you learn. Like I said, I went through the trials of tribulations so I could try to help others. So uh, as far as mentorship, I did take on one person uh, so far that I'm, I'm helping. I get, basically gave them all the game that they need. A lot of the game that I'm giving y'all in this uh, video, but with them, Whenever they get started and they're rolling, they have access to, you know, reach out to me directly and I'll help them with any questions they have. Cause I didn't have that. Like I had my shout out to my homeboy aunt. 
he helped me with a lot of questions that I had. Uh, but that, like I said, there was a lot of stuff we didn't know uh, starting out. So he has access to that. Uh, my, you know, me directly giving him uh, certain information, helping walk him through certain things, uh, giving him, you know, whether it's uh, some dispatch uh, service information, whether it's broker information, you know, whatever, because I'm not going to share that with just anybody. But uh, if, I mean, if you're interested in something like that, drop a comment, let me know. If you're serious, uh, you can DM me on Instagram, Corey Mo underscore, and we'll discuss it. It's hard to trust people these days, so I mean, I'm I'm not trying to do too much, but you know, I'm one of the, I'm one of the real ones. I'm not trying to charge people an arm and a leg. I'm trying to help people. So hopefully, this video was of you know good use for y'all. Excuse me, I gotta, I gotta go to sleep. It's like 11 o'clock already and I gotta hit the road in the morning, drive to Colorado from Texas. So like I said, subscribe, like the video, share the video. Um, sharing will definitely help, help the algorithm. Thumbs up, like it, it's not that hard. Helps the video, helps the algorithm. Uh, and comment, comment any feedback. Just like I say in my, my gun videos, if y'all don't know what to say, hashtag pressure, because that's what I'm applying. So, man, hey, stick around for the next video. Let me know uh, in the comments, too, if y'all want to see me drop some more OTR vlogs. If y'all want, you know, me to go into depth in the OTR vlogs and show, you know, from how I do my EOD or, you know, how I'm unloading, loading dealing with brokers, you know, whatever the case may be, just drop down in the comments, let me know what y'all want to see. And yeah, man, to the next one.